All right, you got your alpha copy of Mind Mars here in Chrome. Uh, you load it as an extension. You'll open it, and here you'll see that this one's already been loaded. So it checked for additional files that needed from the server. You could go ahead and and launch this. So this is uh, Mind Mars uh, pre-existing. So what we're going to show you is what it's going to look like when you first load it uh, in alpha phase. So you can help us out. Um, so here I open up the file system, and you can see. There's games, images, and region source. Those have all been downloaded from the server or created live using the file system API. So I'm going to go into the console and use the game services API that we've been working on. And uh, I'm going to use the file system API to format, <coughs> format the uh, file system. It's going to clear everything at the root directory. Um, and so I'm going to let that sit for a second. Sometimes it takes a little while for all the files uh, to be deleted. So I'm going to go back to the file system, refresh, and you'll see that everything is gone. And that's great. So what we'll do is we'll refresh MindMars, and uh, MindMars will kick off and check. Um, basically what happens here is it's going to check against all the files it thinks it needs from the server. And um, if it has them in uh, local storage, or in the local file system, I should say, then it'll use them. If not, it will go and download them. So I've sped this up. Depending on our connection, it could take a while. It has to load some images and all the region source files. Um, basically, the world built out. Uh, it could take some time, um, but it's great. It's uh, it runs through the the uh, game services API, has all this functionality. So if you have time, um, if it's taking a while, you can do your key mapping. There's going to be a button on the bottom right hand side, so you can map your keys while you're waiting. Uh, but it's basically running through and grabbing the rest of the world right here. It might take a few seconds. In the beginning, to grab the images, the images are pretty large, uh, but everything else should go pretty quick. So we'll watch this finish loading here. And once the, all the files are pulled from the server, they'll be stored in a local file system, and you'll never need to grab them again, basically. So I'm, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit before it's finished and reopen it and show you that it will actually check to see which ones were finished. Right there. See how fast it goes and then gets the rest of them, which is pretty sweet. So once it has all the local files, it has to do a little bit of work to render the terrain. And then I'll show that here. So what we've done here is rather than hold a ton of information on our server and serve it to everybody, uh, we give all the files to the user and let them generate the terrain themselves. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit. But uh, the great thing is it kind of tells you the story about the game as the terrain is generated and stored. Again, this only happens once when you first download and load the game. These files are copied every time you, you complete a new game, which is fantastic. So there you go, it's all done. And now we're ready to begin. We'll never have to go through these steps again. And I, I'm gonna need help with this story. So people who are creative, I would love some great text and images. So we're ready to start a new mission. Um, but first we'll check the file system. As you can see, um, everything's been loaded, the images, and then the regions uh, from the server. And uh, there's a lot of regions. <laughs> it's a pretty big world. Uh, so we'll start a new mission. And what happens is the, the region source is copied into a new folder based on the name of the mission that you create. So that's going to create a J Martin folder instead of games. It will actually copy the source region so you can have multiple games going at one time. It's very fancy. Uh, again, that's all using the game services file uh, system API that we have going on here. So everything's copied. It doesn't take too long to make that happen. And then uh, it launches you right into the game. And it's going to load you at our starting point. I'll show you a few other features that you'll have in Alpha. Um, first of which is you start in this cave. Uh, but there's lots of buttons at the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see them. Uh, you can change the resolution and the memory used. I'm showing you here that uh, there's kind of two variables. These will be separated later. Um, here you can go dark and light with buttons to test night and daytime. So if it starts to get dark, automatically you can lighten things up if you're kind of moving around. If you make yourself an admin, you get unlimited materials, which is fantastic. And you do not die if you run out in the outskirts or fall too far. So that's very helpful. Um, it also activates a rocket pack, uh, which lets you kind of float around in case you're you're building the world here. Uh, I attempted to use the um, screenshot. I think my server might be messed up, but what it does is uses the canvas uh, to send a data URI uh, 
and data out to the server, saves the image on my server and sends it back to you so you can take a screenshot and download it. Very handy. So here is the key mapping. This is very important. That button will be there. This is also provided through game services and it allows you uh, basically to map your keys very simply. You can take a look at uh, the types of actions that are provided in different tabs. This will all be refactored uh, with gamepad, etc. But as you can see, it's really great. You get a pretty nice interface. If you want to change, you just click on the action and then you hit the key and it will save it. So, for instance, if you click uh, on these values, kind of some of the movement values, I can click on one of them. Uh, like if I want to do lift left, I click it and hit the key and it saves it for me. And that'll be the same for mouse movements in the gamepad API. It's a little bit trickier, but uh, working out the details of that right now. So that'll be great because you can do combos as well. So you can either do keyboard and gamepad or keyboard and mouse, etc. So it's going to be pretty handy uh, to get these games up and running. Um, and then we're in the game. So fantastic. I hope you enjoy the alpha and you'll be able to run around and create things as you see fit. Uh, enjoy. And please uh, give me feedback as, uh, as it comes in. I'll be glad to take it and um, hopefully we'll work out a lot of the bugs uh, before beta for those who get to help me test out beta.